G'day folks, it's Rob here. Today's clip is something Bianca and I shot on the weekend, just having a bit of a look at how we were running the aquaponics while we had no mains power for a few hours. Bit of an update on things like the papaya or pawpaw in the air pruning wicking barrel, some bananas going to flower in a container, and to begin with we'll have a bit of a look at the native beehive down the back. G'day folks. These are our native Australian um, Tetragonula hockingsi bees. And we just noticed, or Bianca noticed, there's a load of bees all over the front and hanging around the front of it. A bit hard to see with the backdrop of greens there. What will happen is often a lot of males will wait around outside uh, waiting for a female to come along. Um, or a queen, sorry. I, I'm by no means an expert, by the way. That's just what I've gleaned through bits and pieces of books I've read. So I don't think that's going to happen today. I think it might be just that it's warm, babe. Because it has happened before previously, and we had a whole heap um, hanging around. The males will go and congregate somewhere together and form a little waiting party. But there are a lot, aren't there? There is. If you come around the front, it might give you a bit of a better indication. Oh, that noise in the background, by the way, is a generator. Our aquaponics has no power today because they're doing some work across the street, changing um, power poles. So we bought a little generator, a little thousand watt jobby. But anyway, back to the bees. We'll see if we can come in a little bit closer. Yeah. Looking at it, you can see them all coming in. So they're all coming in, are they? Yeah, it's in the garden. I, I don't know if it's coming up on they're camera, but I see what you mean. Yeah. Well, as you can see, it's sort of by the Chinese Celtus over there. It's Oh, we're coming up to mid-ish sort of winter. Oh, still in the first third, but yeah, trees are starting to lose their leaves. There's not a great deal flowering, but there are some flowering trees around. But yeah, I haven't seen them this active for a long time. Just before I run up and show you the generator, I thought I'd show you these couple of loofers. We've got a couple of cylindrical loofers here that have um, just off a volunteer vine that grew up the mango. This one here is still yet to dry out. Oh, she's feeling pretty squishy. This one here is well and truly dry. She's still got a little cap on the end there. What happens is um, this little cap will fall off and all the seeds will fall out. So I'll probably take it off well before that happens. Oh, I suppose now's as good a time as any. Yeah, some of them are nice and loose. Uh, it's a little bit moist by the feel of it, but we've had rain this week, so I might let it dry before I um, take the cap off the end. While we're down here, I just uploaded the um, ginger clip. So I thought I'd give you a look at the other ginger bed anyway. Uh, this one here has a few different gingers in it. It's got the Ken Chur ginger up the back here. Um, just two little patches of that, which I won't be harvesting. I just want them to overwinter and build up. And this is the normal ginger. We plan it out. So there's this one, one in the middle, and one over on the other side that's already died back. Down the front there we have our finger root. And this one here, that'll probably stay green all winter, is our Cambodian ginger, given to us by a lovely family. Um, that one there, I'm pretty much all going to leave because I have a few other bits and pieces around the place. The turmeric bed here, they're starting to die back, as are the turmeric over in the back corner. I'll actually point to a harvest clip if you guys want on that one there. Um, yeah, the pawpaw here, or papaya. This is a volunteer that just popped up in the bed. Getting loads of flowers, but we're not seeing any fruit form. But then again, this bed was taken over by some Egyptian spinach earlier on in the season, which I've been steadily collecting seed from. These are the empty seed pods. It's a pretty easy thing to do. I just hold the bucket underneath it and give it a, these things a bit of a tap in there and collect loads of seeds that way. And over the back there we have the galangal. Uh, this galangal actually set flowers and seeds this year. I got about um, I think there's 11 or 12 seeds, so it's the first time it's um, formed seeds for me. So I'll be trying to um, sprout them later on. I actually grew this stand from seed from a local chap, so thank you very much, Scott. As you can see down there, this is doing very, very well. <laughs> More than enough gallangal for us, that's for sure. Quick look at the chicken pen site. Um, we did play around with this. I think I mentioned it in another YouTube clip. Um, it's not going there. We've decided that we're going to situate it this way. So we'll have a rear wall along here, a side wall, and then there'll be a gate going into the pen and the, um, the chicken pen itself will run that way. Something we've got to hook into and start uh, at least working out how the pen's going to sit. 
Um, yeah, I'll take it up and show you the gen. So I hope you can hear me. Uh, it's just a little uh, generator, just a little 1000 watt. Uh, the reason we decided to buy one rather than borrow is because when we renovate the house, uh, we're going to need something to power the fish tanks here. Um, so that little one we thought was actually going to be a little bit quiet, but it hasn't turned out that way. But it seems to be doing, you know, an okay job. It's running the tanks in here, the pumps, both the air pumps and the um, water pump. As you can see, this thing is still looking rather lush. Oh, it was Bianca and my anniversary through the week. We both forgot, but my mum remembered and um, she dropped down some lettuce. Just some volunteers that are growing in her small system. So we planted those guys out. By the way, I will be doing an update on Mum's aquaponic system very soon. Uh, there's just been a few things going on family-wise, so we haven't had a chance to have a crack at it. The rest of the system's looking nice. Getting a decent amount of tomatoes on these KY1s. There's a few, there's probably over close to two dozen tomatoes on the three plants. There's a few more up in there. Uh, actually, I might um, take you into the hoop house and show you what's going on in there. This bed here is the only one we're really growing anything in at the moment. We have a load of the honeypod peas. So they've finally taken off. I've started to use a little bit of um, fish emulsion made from a um, pest species here in Australia. Um, the European carp is a pest species in a lot of places. And since I've been doing that, a lot of the plants have responded really well. Um, I have posted clips. Um, basically, our, all our wicking beds have tree roots in them. There's some of the little blighters down there. So whatever I've been putting in here, the trees have been using up very quickly, compost and manure wise. So what I've been doing is just spot watering um, the plants themselves. Um, this collard is absolutely amazing. This is a tree collard. Thank you very much for this, Chris. Uh, Bianca and I were just discussing how we're going to cook some up tonight. Or well, maybe tomorrow night, we'll just wait and see. But we've got nothing planned for tonight. Just down in there, we're starting to get a little bit of a flower head. So it'll be interesting to see what the progeny um, turn out to be. This bed here is slowly coming to life, as I mentioned after I fed it. We've got the parsley there, some onions that have never formed bulbs. That's all right, use them as onion greens. Perennial leeks, loads and loads of warrigal greens that have come up, or New Zealand spinach that has come up as volunteers. I harvested a meal's worth just out of this little area there the other night. So that was fantastic. Broccoli and the cauliflower. There's a row of cauliflower there and another one over there. They're all slowly taking off. I actually pulled out the cauliflower that was growing there accidentally. Um, I planted it down here out of the way when I was doing the harvest the other day, but you know, you get that. I've just moved the generator down the back so hopefully you can hear me a little bit better. Uh, what I've got here is a little wicking barrel with four warrigal greens in it. They're little volunteers I transplanted in. And we've got some onions that have never formed bulbs there as well. Um, what basically I'm trying to do with the warrigal greens is have enough patches around the place where we can have probably three to four meals a week with these guys um, whether it's a stew a curry or you know just mash through some pumpkin something along those lines we also add a few little leaves into salads but not a great deal over here is just the piggy wicking barrel I haven't fixed up oh Lee I do have your mother-in-law's tongue uh, planted out potted up but we ended up getting some ants in the um, pot I don't know if you can see them down there. We ended up getting some ants in there, so it's come back outside. And we've also had a load of warrigal greens um, germinate. So obviously I used recycled soil from something that had warrigal greens in it. Speaking of which, this is the one the volunteers came from. Um, this basically had one run of warrigal green grow over the top of it. And all the seeds that fell in there have just, you know, germinated and it's gone burko. And in the last barrel is one um, full of pepino. That's one little pepino plant that I cut all the way back. We had a real problem with mites. So um, it's definitely doing a lot better. It too's had some of the fish emulsion. So pepinos are in the same family as tomatoes and potatoes. Uh, they're a little bushing crop. They actually grow a little bit like a vine. We've had them go berserk in the aquaponics previously. The little fruit sort of tastes like a um, not so sweet rock melon. Uh, is very tasty so definitely a plant i want to get more fruit from they also grow very easily from um, cuttings as well uh, this lot here came from nathan g'day nathan uh, nathan's been a friend of ours for years on facebook and youtube and he's decided to become a patron so thank you very much mr nathan um, we're actually heading down your way in a couple of weeks time so uh what else oh i know what i can show you 
This is the barrel I showed you in the warm climate greens clip that had the purslane growing in it. As you can see, the uh, Chinese red amaranth has finally taken over. We've got probably a meal's worth of purslane down the back here. I keep threatening to harvest it. We need to get in here before it uh, forms little seed pods because those little seed pods can actually get rather crunchy and annoying um, in salads and that sort of thing. So I need to come through and get rid of that understory. Also too, I may have mentioned before, a local market gardener, Dave, g'day Dave, um, he suggested that these guys might also harbour mites. So definitely want to get these guys out of the patch because I've had a real issue with mites over the last couple of seasons. And just up here in the banana, this is the decas. We have a hand or two of bananas forming on this thing. Now this thing here, a few guys who have followed us for a while will know that we bought a couple of years ago and we've been growing them in a root pouch. So it's a, um, this one here is a 30 gallon root pouch or 113 litres. And this, this plant has done really well, um, considering all the um, pain it's gone through. The chickens dug it up a couple of times when it was young. Um, it was blown over in the wind, in the storms a few times. And just recently, um, I haven't been keeping the fertiliser up to it. And it's got a little bit of a calcium deficiency, but it looks to be bouncing back. I fed up that pouch and this one here with the blue java, and they've both bounced back nicely. So this one here, we've already had a bunch of bananas from, the blue java but the tree actually fell over and split a lot of them just before they were ready to um, ripen up. So they came off the plant a little bit too early. These guys here though, now that we're out of storm season, hopefully we'll get a couple of um, decent hands of bananas. The phone's having real problems trying to focus, but I hope you can see those little flowers in there. And there's um, more on these bananas there. So what happens is you'll have the female um, flowers come through, which are what will have the fruit on them. And then you'll end up with just the male flowers at the end. Uh, what they tend to do is bring in the um, native fruit bats. They come in and they feed on the nectar of both the female flowers and also the males. So I tend to cut the bells off. That's the flower bell that holds the male flowers once they get to a certain size. So yeah, I'm, I'm really chuffed about that. Um, I never thought I'd grow a banana to um, production in a um, container, but obviously this, this method does work. Um, just like the dwarf pawpaw we have, or papaya, I just need to keep the feed up to it a little bit more. So actually we might go around and give you a look at the dwarf pawpaw. So this is our dwarf papaya or pawpaw. Uh, this thing here is a couple of years old now. It's had a number of fruiting events, but it's not continually fruiting. That is because I just haven't been maintaining or keeping the nutrients up to the plant. It's growing in a little air pruning wicking barrel I made up. There's basically a little reservoir down the bottom that keeps um, the water to the roots. Um, I've just neglected and haven't been good enough at keeping enough food going in there. With all container plants you do need to fertilise them because the roots obviously can't go out and mine them for themselves. So this one here, um, just to show you the fruiting events, you can see one here, there's some pawpaw um, where the fruit or the papaya has grown out and there's another one here. We obviously get a nice um, lot of pawpaws every time it happens. There's another one there and I'd say we're just coming into another fruiting event now. So. The main drawback, I often get asked to do updates on this, the main drawback of growing in a situation like this is I haven't been keeping the food up to the plant itself and it has suffered production wise. So um, if it was in the aquaponics I reckon it'd absolutely be flying along because it's always got that nutrient rich water um, at its roots. So um, something I'm just going to have to uh, get a little bit more practice on I think. And just down beside here we have a lizzie dog with a ball. So we'll just throw that for the pup. There you go Liz. A little bit of an update on the uh, dwarf lemon tree we've got growing in this little um, wicking tray arrangement with the root pouch here. I also popped in a little dill. There's a little uh, volunteer amaranth around the front we'll keep. Won't let it get too big. But we're starting to see some buds form on here. Now this is a dwarf variety and normally they'd um, suggest that with any citrus you take all the buds and the fruit off for the first year. But I think we might leave these guys on and see how they go. There's a couple of more buds just forming up in there as well, so um, you never know, we might end up with a half decent harvest from this. Be interesting to see how she goes. Um, I am thinking about just modifying the base a bit, um, something Bianca has pointed out as well as viewers online. Uh, maybe I should take the pouch off, put a layer of rocks around the outside, and then um, put the pouch back on. What's this? Lizzie, what's this? It's another ball. Oh, they keep coming back. There you go. So I'm just down here now to um, harvest some limes. We've got a fair decent crop on here at the moment and there's more coming through. 
See a little um, baby one there. You know, I noticed some more babies up over the top there. Um, just there, there's three or four, probably only one or two will stick. A few more down in there. And there's more flowers. They always um, tend to be on the west side of the bush. Some there, and some more around here coming through. But as you can see, these uh, limes are starting to change color a bit, so they do need to come off. Uh, they're getting a, a little bit of a yellow tinge to them. And I did notice one from up the top has actually fallen through and is down on the ground over there, but it looks like it's got a blemish on it. it. Might be a little bit too far gone. Oh, Lizzie, you want me to kick it, do you? Here we go. Excuse me, folks. Oops, <laughs> that was a very, very sad kick, wasn't it, Robert? Um, so there's more around here that I want to nip off as well. There's a couple like these guys up here. Um, a nice little group of four there. I don't think they're ready to come off. Oh, yeah, maybe they are. Yeah. Well, actually, I just broke the stem, but anyway. Um, there's more down here. So whatever we don't pick today, I'm only going for the ones with a slight discoloration on them. Whatever we don't pick today will stay on the bush for another week or so, just so we can use up what we've got. There's some more down there, there's some more flowers. Um, and as you can hear, the generator's still going. Um, it's getting close to, um, actually, I think it's just after five, and they're still working on the power, so, um, yeah. Um, hopefully they won't be too much longer, because I'm nearly running out of petrol for the generator. Anyway, I'm gonna put this phone down and um, start collecting some limes. Back in a tick, folks. So there you go, folks. There's a bit of a look at the Tahitian limes. Um, a nice selection there. Uh, some of the yellow ones, um, one from on the ground and one that was still on the tree. So I'm, I'm pretty stoked about that little harvest. Plus, there's still fruit on the tree. Um, we've got a couple just in there. There's some more down in there. There's a fair number still up around here. I just didn't want to take them all off if I couldn't process them. And I did notice there's a um, baby or two around as well. So we've got a few coming through the next generation. Uh, but yeah, I'm pretty um, chuffed that we're seeing these flowers come. I'm, I'm pretty stoked with that. I'd say a few of these will probably um, end up going to work with Bianca. She's got a few friends she shares with there. And I dare say mum and dad might end up with one or two as well. Do you want to come and say goodbye, Lizzie? Lizzie, come here. Lizzie, sit. Sit. Good girl. Lizzie and I will call it quits. We might go for a W-A-L-K. And um, yeah, I hope you guys have enjoyed this little bit of an impromptu look at um, just around the garden. We saw the bees this morning. We thought we'd share them with you. So um, yeah, I've had fun. Was planning to do a little bit around the chicken coop, but yeah, that happens when you get visitors. I like to spend time with them. So just quickly, thank you to everyone for um, watching the clips and commenting down below and to the fantastic patrons who support us. And I will pretty much all leave it there. Hope you're all well and happy and your gardens are booming and we'll see you later. Won't we Lizzie? Cheers folks. Have a top one. Do you really want your ball? Isn't there something you'd rather do? Wouldn't you rather go for a walk? Do you want to go for a walk? Lizzie go for a walk?